Hey everyone, it's Mrs. LC. Today I am coming at you with the top five most common ukulele mistakes and how to fix them. What I'm going to do is take you through just the things that I have seen as both a player and as a teacher, little tiny tweaks that you can make to make your playing better and sort of help you get over the hump if you're struggling with certain things. In most cases, these are really small, tiny little tweaks and quick fixes that if you just modify a little bit, your playing can be much, much better and you'll feel much better about yourself. But before we get started, I just want to encourage you, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so that you can continue to to get the content that I am releasing on a regular basis. Here at Music with Mrs. LC, I offer chord tutorials, song tutorials, ukulele play-alongs, product reviews, and much, much more, so make sure that you subscribe before we get started. We're going to go ahead and get started with most common ukulele mistake number one. Okay, so mistake number one is something that I never thought about when I started playing the ukulele. Now this actually applies to guitar too, if you're playing guitar. But what you really want to think about is what you're wearing can actually affect your playing. Let me explain. Now, when you look at the instrument, what you're going to notice is that, you know, you have to keep the strings free and clear of any obstructions because the way that the instrument is played is that the strings have to be able to vibrate. Now I wore a denim jacket today to sort of demonstrate this. When I play, I have now gotten into the habit of playing almost always with short sleeves and if I do wear sleeves I wear like a three-quarter sleeve because what happens is when you're trying to play if you're wearing long sleeves and your sleeve keeps hitting the strings as you strum it's gonna stop it's going to stop you from being able to have uh, a ringing out of your strings so when you're playing you want to make sure that your sleeves are not too long if they are long you want to go ahead and fold them back so that as you play, they are no longer obstructing your play. So that when you strum, you don't have that sort of dead sound that you have when you have long sleeves on. So always roll up your sleeves. Generally speaking, make sure that this entire area here where the strings are is free and clear of obstructions. The other thing that I've seen with wardrobe problems is people that wear long necklaces down the back. If you're wearing a long necklace or something back here and you're playing, it's going to keep clicking against the back of the instrument. And you're going to be playing, you're going to hear this click, click, click. And it's because you have a necklace that's hitting the back of the instrument. So if you have that, you want to take it and kind of tuck it into your shirt or just not wear it because that's going to also cause a problem. The third thing that I didn't even think about when it comes to wardrobe things is hair. I had a student with really, really long hair, and whenever she would play and look down, her hair would actually hit the strings, it was really long, and it would stop the strings from vibrating. And I couldn't figure out what was going wrong, and then I realized it was actually her hair hitting and touching the strings every time she looked down at her strings. So if you have long, long hair that, that touches the strings, you want to make sure you either pull it back in a ponytail or just kind of put it behind your shoulders like this so that it's not going to obstruct. You want to make sure that if you have sleeves on, that you have a, like a three-quarter sleeve or roll your sleeves up so that you don't have that going on. And you just want to make sure you don't have any jewelry that's banging up against the instrument. So first and foremost, make sure that you're not sabotaging yourself by wearing something that's going to keep the strings from being able to vibrate. And that's going to take us to ukulele mistake number two. All right, so ukulele mistake number two is playing with flat fingers. This is a tough one for me to explain to students, both young and old, of what does it mean to play with flat fingers. So I usually use this little illustration to show you, okay? So on my left hand, the left hand is the one that's making the chords, right? The chord shapes. And a lot of times, newer students will press down with this part of the fingers. See where the X's are? It's kind of, I call it the meat of your fingers, all right? That's where they're pressing down. And if I try to play, let's say, an F chord with my fingers there, and I'm pushing down on with that part of my finger, I've got a couple strings ringing out, but it's kind of a dead sound, right? But if you play up here where these dots are, this is the tips of your fingers. This is where you should be pushing down the string on your ukulele. Not here, but up here. And that means you're going to have to keep your nails trimmed really short. Really, really important, guys. You can't have those pretty fancy acrylic nails if you're going to do this. So. Instead of playing on the meat of the finger, you wanna come up to the tip. There's actually a good amount of skin there to press down. And if you play with your fingers curved up on the tips, 
now you get that nice ringing out of sound. So instead of playing flat, you want to come up and play up on the tips, which is going to require you to go up. I always call it up, play on your tiptoes for my younger students. Get up on your tippy toes and that's where you want to push down. So curved fingers playing on the tips, not playing flat where you get that dead flat sound. Even if all of your fingers are in the right spot, if I play a G chord flat fingered, it's not going to ring out. But if I come up on the tips, now I've got a G chord. So remember, tips, not the flat part of your fingers. And that takes us to common ukulele mistake number three. So ukulele mistake number three goes along with number two with, with the flat fingers thing, but I think it's an entirely different problem altogether, which is why I've given it its own number. And that is not enough pressure on the fretboard. Now the fretboard is actually the piece of wood underneath the string that you have to push down into to make a chord. And a lot of beginner players, because you have sensitive fingers, they don't want to push down. They don't really want to press against that fretboard because at first there's some pain. It's a little bit uncomfortable comfortable. And that pain is normal, it goes away, but the only way to build up the endurance on your fingers is to actually continue to press down onto the fretboard. So for example, if I play a C chord, all right, now I play a C chord and I have my finger curved like I'm supposed to and I push down on it and I play it. Okay, I got the first three strings, but here's my C. See how dead that is? Because even though I have my finger in the right place, I'm not pushing down against the fretboard. Okay, I'm just laying my finger on it. If I do that, I get no sound. But if I push down, it will ring out. So what you have to do is make sure you're actually pressing down into the fretboard and you really wanna make sure that your thumb is behind the neck. I have a lot of beginner students that wanna play like this with their thumb out in front which maybe for the early chords might work, but when you get into two and three finger chords and you're pushing down, your instrument is gonna slide right out of your hand. So your thumb should be along the back to give you resistance. Now if I go ahead and play an F chord, let's say I don't put enough pressure down, I'm just setting my fingers in the right spot. See how you don't hear anything, even though your fingers are right and they're curved, just like I said, but I'm not pressing down. You have to press down and now you get that chord to ring out. So you wanna make sure that you are pressing down into the fretboard. If you don't have any tension or pressure pushing down, you're not gonna get the chord to sound the way you want it to. Now, if you're a beginner, you're gonna say, well, my fingers hurt. What am I supposed to do? Keep pressing down when my fingers hurt? Here's what you do. Five minutes a day, practice five minutes a day. And in those five minutes over the period of a week or two, you will build up a resistance on your fingers to where that pain goes away. I promise that pain goes away, but it will never go away if you don't actually force your fingers to push down and create that like thicker skin. All right, so make sure that you're pressing down against the fretboard, that your thumb is on the back of the neck so that you can push into something. So if your thumb is out here, there's nowhere to push, it's gonna slide and the right amount of pressure will give you the chord that you want. Now that takes us to common ukulele mistake number four. Now we move on to common ukulele mistake number four, which is painful strumming. This is a big, big complaint among my students in particular. I, I hear this and I see this all the time. My students, they'll get the stuff up here on the left hand, but when it comes to strumming, they are creating this pain. If you're strumming and it hurts, it should not hurt. If it hurts, you're doing something wrong. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways that you can strum without causing yourself to have pain because if it's painful, you're not gonna to wanna to keep doing it, right? So the ukulele was actually designed to be strummed with a hand. It was not designed like a guitar to be strummed with a pick. And the reason for that is that the strings on ukulele are nylon. They are not made of steel like guitar strings. They are not nearly as painful. If you tried to strum a guitar for an hour with your finger, you would be in a lot of pain. But the ukulele was designed to be a finger strummed instrument. So although they sell picks for ukuleles, I don't always recommend them because when you get into strum patterns of having to come up on the strings and down and up and down, it's really, really awkward and, and hard to do if you have a pick in your hand. So I always say, don't get in the habit of playing with a pick because it's not a good habit to get into with the ukulele. With the guitar, yes. With this, no. All right, so if you wanna go the one finger method, which is what I use, okay? The mistake that I see from my students is that if I'm gonna use a C chord, what they do is they come down 
on the side of their finger. They're actually strumming with the, with the skin. Now, I'm getting a nice sound, but this hurts. Like, it, it hurts. If I had to do a whole song, ow. If I had to do a whole song like this, I would be in a ton of pain, and I would, I'm even getting a little bit of redness on the side of my finger. You don't want to strum with the side of your finger. You want to actually strum with your nail, with the back of your pointer finger nail. Now, my students say, well, I don't have long nails. Neither do I. Look how, how short my nails are. You're not strumming with the top long part of your nail. You're just strumming with the back of your nail. And what I do is I say, put your fingers up like this, curve your pointer finger down, okay? And then what you do is you just flip it over like this. Flip it over, hug the side of your instrument, and with your nail, strum. With only your nail, you should not catch any skin at all. It should literally be the whole back part of your nail is actually what is strumming down. Now if you do that, you're not going to have the pain. As soon as you start having pain, you have to adjust your, your setting so that you don't. So it's fingers up like this, curve the pointer finger down, and flip it upside down like this. And you want to strum with the nail part of your finger, up and down and up and down, catching no skin. Now you might have to practice that a little bit to get it to where it's actually going to not hurt and you're going to hit just the nail, not the skin or the side. Now, if that does not work for you and it's just not working, not clicking in, you can't get it, the alternative is to use your thumb. Okay, You can use your thumb, the skin of your thumb. It should not cause you any pain, but it's going to cause a little bit of a problem when you get into more complicated strum patterns where you have to go up, down, up, down. But if you're a beginner and you just want to strum and you just are too impatient or it's just frustrating for you to use your nail, that is an alternative where you can use your thumb. But the one finger nail method has become my go-to for painless strumming for a very long time. So that's going to take us to common ukulele mistake number five. All right, so the last and final ukulele mistake number five is poor wrist position. Now this is really important when you get into the more complicated uh, three and four finger chords. What you wanna do is a lot of people when they play, if your wrist is up like this, see how my wrist is up? It doesn't give my fingers a lot of movement space, but if I drop my wrist down, now I have all this space to play. I am guilty of raising up my wrist like this and kind of getting myself into some trouble sometimes. And so the way to keep proper wrist position is when you play, and I'm sitting down now, set your instrument on your leg, okay? And you want to have the bottom of the instrument sitting on your leg, and you want to have the neck angled up. You want to have it angled up. So instead of playing like this, have the neck angled up. And what that does is that allows for your wrist to stay down like that. When you stand, it's harder because your wrist tends to want to go up like this. So if you're standing to play, highly recommend using a strap. A strap allows the instrument to rest on its own and you don't have to hold it up so that it has nowhere to go. If you drop it, it falls on the floor. So if you're playing while standing, especially if you're a new player, use a strap. I try to use a strap when I'm standing up as much as possible. And if I'm sitting, let the instrument rest on your leg have the neck angled up so that you are not having to hold it up with your arm and that way it allows your wrist to stay nice and low and give you lots of space to form chords without being up high like that and impossible for you to kind of have movement on the neck. So that is ukulele mistake number five. So I would like to thank you guys for listening to these. If you are not a subscriber remember to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. I will continue to post new videos with new content regularly. I also do take requests if there's a play along you're looking for, or if there's a specific thing you'd like me to teach, I'm happy to take those requests. Make sure that you make those requests in the comments. Thank you so much for listening and being here and supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.